Hello everyone and welcome back to another Melbourne Cup 2024 video. This time it's episode 3 of the Internationals taking a look at all the international chances, well some of the more fancied international chances that ran in the month of June. Uh, so without further ado we'll get straight on with what we usually do, the market first of all the horses. So Circle of Fire remains the favourite at $11, a big mover after its big win yesterday. Berkshire Breeze $101 into $15, Middle Earth $18 into $15. T.O. Royal, the Japanese horse, stays at the $15. Solcom's been $15 out to $16. This is um, the price fluctuation since we did uh, the last episode of the Internationals. By the way, the map $15 out to $17. Warmongers holds solid at $18. Voban's been the drifter $15 out to $19. A big firmer has been bare on the loose after its first up win in Sydney a couple of weeks ago, 101 into 21. Mark Twain holds solid at $21. Then you've got Tower of London, $26 into $21. Last year's winner without a fight, $18 out to $21. Isle of Jura, Cascadian's younger brother, $26. And then Post Impressionist and Zardozzi are both at $26 as well. The first race we're going to take a look at is the Belmont Gold Cup, taken out by the Grey Wizard. This was in America at Saratoga. The Grey Wizard and Siskini are highlighted. Now, Siskini finishes a distant seventh, and the Grey Wizard wins the race. These horses are both $34 at the moment for the Melbourne Cup, which tells me that Siskini probably started a better SP than the Grey Wizard on this day. And Siskini's trained by Charlie Appleby, so maybe didn't handle... Um, just the trip over to America in general or something, because it's won 10 races in its career, Siskini, from about 20-odd starts. So it's doing pretty well. Um, so I'm not sure what happened there. If they're both the same price for the Melbourne Cup and they're both dishing up those performances in the Belmont Gold Cup, then you've got to say the Grey Wizard's the better chance. But maybe something wasn't right with Siskini, so maybe not riding it off yet. Um, but the Grey Wizard was very impressive. That was its fourth win of its career from 16 starts. It had been going well up until that Belmont Gold Cup, and then it went to another level. We've all heard of this horse. It's been featuring in uh, the first two episodes of the Internationals, and it was the favourite for last year's Melbourne Cup. It is Vauban. This was its run, finishing fourth in the Ascot Gold Cup behind Kiprios and Trawler Man. Now, probably why this horse has been a drifter is because of this performance. You would have expected Vauban to finish a little bit higher up in the order um, to be a a real Melbourne Cup contender this year. In terms of how good the Ascot Gold Cup is for um, uh, a lead up to the Melbourne Cup, Spanish Mission ran third in the Ascot Gold Cup in 2021. It then ran third in the uh, Melbourne Cup. In 2019, I'm pretty sure Master of Reality ran third in the Ascot Gold Cup, and then it went on to run fourth, I'm pretty sure, in the 2019 Melbourne Cup, so it's a decent lead up to the Melbourne Cup, but would have liked to see Verban finishing a little bit higher to get excited. The next two horses to take a look at are Isle of Jura and Middle Earth. They both come through the Hardwick Stakes that was run during the Ascot Carnival, and wow wee, what a performance it was from Isle of Jura. Sprinted away from the rest of them to record a nice win. This horse has just gone from strength to strength. It's now eight from 13 in its career. Cascadian's younger brother is flying. Carried the same weight as Middle Earth on this day, and um, they were both off four and five week freshen up, so they were both um, having the same sort of preparation. They both carried the same weight, and Isle of Jura uh, beat Middle Earth by about three or so lengths, and Isle of Jura is $26, Middle Earth $15. I know who I want to be on at the price if you look at it that way, but Middle Earth might have been a tad flat after its first up run in the Aston Park stakes, so maybe it has some improvement to come, but all eyes were on Isle of Jura in that race. It was sensational. The next horse we're going to take a look at is another Royal Ascot Carnival winner. It is Bellocchio. This horse won the same race that Vauban did last year that put Vauban favourite for the Melbourne Cup. Bellocchio is trained by Willie Mullins as well. Vauban was, uh, is trained by Willie Mullins as well, so there's some similarities there. The only uh, difference is that Bellocchio won by about a length or just under a length and Vauban won by about seven. So... Um, Bellocchio probably deserves to be the price it is at the moment for the Melbourne Cup. Um, it'll probably have to improve off that performance uh, to be featuring or uh, be a decent or a good chance. It'll probably have to improve off this performance to be a really 
big threat contender for the Melbourne Cup, but Willie Mullins is planning to come out over here um, and bringing Bellaccio with him. So, um, yeah, we'll see how he goes. Next, we're going to take a look at a horse by the name of Crystal Black. It was uh, This was its win in the Duke of Edinburgh Stakes, where it flew down the outside to win. This horse has won four in a row. It's been very impressive. Um, it's... Yeah, doing everything right. The Duke of Edinburgh Stakes, I was looking back through the past editions of the race, seeing how good it was for a form reference. And last year, the race was taken out by Okita Sushi, who came out to um, uh, Australia and was probably a, a, a class below all the other internationals that came over. So I'm not too sure if Crystal Black will feature heavily over here if it does come over here. But um, yeah, I thought I'd chuck it in the video because it won the Duke of Edinburgh Stakes really well. The last horse we're gonna take a look at for today is a bit of a roughie for the internationals. Its name is Harbour Wind. This was its win in the Martin Maloney Stakes at Limerick on about the 22nd of June, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this was at listed level. Um, this race is a form reference. Uh, Twilight Payment ran third in this race in 2018. Two years later, he went on to win the Melbourne Cup. And true racing fans would remember the horse Pondus. Pondus ran second in this race in 2020. So it's actually a decent form reference for the Melbourne Cup. Um, and Harbour Wind uh, is on a bit of a roll. It's won four from six in its career. It's a progressive young horse. And I think um, the way it's going, it could... Um, feature over here and be competitive. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Out of all those uh, internationals, I probably was taken with Isle of Jura the most. $26 looks appealing, but now it's always time for the Saminator top three seeds from the Australian horses. Because it's June and no one's been racing, I've had no reason to change. Via Sistina is still my on-top pick, but it's out to $34 which surprises me a bit considering how promising it's been. Uh, maybe a few inside sources that aren't public um, have got word from Chris Waller or something that it's not targeting the Melbourne Cup, but I'm, I have no idea. Vir Sistine is good enough. Mark Twain and Warmonger, I think those were my three last time. So going for those three again. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you for next Melbourne Cup Internationals um, video. Episode number four will be out next month. Bye for now.